All right, man. Yep. Give us a call. We'll take care. Absolutely. All right. Have a good one. You too. All right. Let's do it. All right. Uh, please tell us who you are. Who I am. I moved to Minnesota when I was seven years old. My parents got divorced. Uh, and I spent every summer in uh, Mississippi and every winter uh, going to school here. And so I like to say I had uh, a passport in two very different worlds. I, I always say my place in Jackson was like an African village. You know, you go from space to space seeing different types of life being lived in front of you and it kind of informs who you are and what it's all about. Like I remember seeing my grandmother take used spam cans and turn them into uh, pin cushions and she would sell them, right? And so these things kind of inform like this kind of like rugged ingenuity of like repurposing and finding and just being creative with what you got. As I've gotten older, I realize I'm inherently a creative. That's who I am uh, and that's the lens through which I see the world and every problem that I tackle. From real estate to coffee, to clothing, to barbering, to you name it, I'm an artist. And so my mission in life, man, is like to creatively solve challenges that are in front of me, whatever they might be, inspire the next generation, and create pathways to generational wealth, specifically for, for black folks. Some people say it's when they have a kid, they realize they got like to grow up and be responsible for me is when I got married. It's like, okay, this is real. You, I'm married to a young woman that's trusting that the things that I'm believing and trying to do, which were very all over the place at that moment, um, that I would deliver on that promise. And so that was scary and, um, also exciting. I asked her to take this walk with me. We build houses, let's build a neighborhood. And so really, man, my, the things that I'm doing were just like continuations of our life together around like my fashion. I always take cues from her style. You know, it's classic with a, with a, a, a little flair, as she always would say. And I, I describe her as the perfect combination between uh, Felicia Rashad and Michelle Obama with just a pinch of Cardi B. She's immortalized all over North Minneapolis. You know, she's on walls and um, this idea of seeing her as forever young. Um, you know, I saw her take her last breath. Um, that forever changes a person. You know, you really get, you really get a sense of purpose and why and how fragile time is with your loved ones. And then over time, I started to just read notes that she had left and like really like embody and embrace the reality of what she wanted to accomplish. And then I tried to use that to like fuel myself forward. When I'm creating Camden Town, she was literally uh, the, she was the, 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 the real muse and, and like inspiration behind it because we were gonna leave Minnesota because there wasn't a space, a place for us as young black professionals who were trying not to just escape to white, to not continue to have to assimilate to like these suburban areas that didn't feel right. But then also wanting good schools, safe neighborhoods, um, and a really dope place to live that didn't exist. Minnesota has the highest disparity, second highest was up there, in education, homeownership rates, 
wealth. So I believe that's directly related to lack of thriving community. So for me, it's helping to build an area that is known for inspiring and, and, and bringing people together as a tribe, as a village that have shared interests. And your success is my success. My success is your success. Your home value goes up, mine goes up, right? And consequently, the schools are better because you're on the booster club. And all of these things come together to really be uh, the, the, what undergirds this, this community of entrepreneurs and creatives that inspire a generation where young kids can come and work in clothing brands, where they can be a part of tech startups, where they can um, work as a barber and own a house in proximity and walk to work and be a part of urban farming and so on and so forth. And so that's really the work that I'm into. What do I hope people will remember about me? Um, first and foremost, that I was true to myself. And it wasn't about me. Um, this idea that you could be a, like a catalyst, a match to just like set something on fire, right? That just exploded this idea of black excellence and cultural collision and inclusivity. I was a part of like this ideal of, of, of understanding that our differences really make us dope. When we referred to some of even my heroes, like Malcolm and Martin and Gandhi and Helen Keller and these different people, I want to be like the mothership connection in a way, right? It's future. Like, let's go to the future um, and, and, and just be this, yeah, man, this, this inflection that, that I helped create this inflection point where we really just move some shit on a human level um, and it benefited a great swath of humanity. I'm talking about enough loot to retire. Dawned in, kings are tired. You got some for Messiah. Sitting on.